Can a rusty old commemorative edition 1988 Porsche 911 G-Body with a G50 transmission and over 300,000 miles find a buyer in this chaotic market? Or is the seller just going to be stuck with a rust bucket in his garage forever? Let's find out. Big Nerds is your daily YouTube car game show where we predict the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Haggerty Marketplace, and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. All right, JP, our friend, your friend, everybody's friend, Sahand, uh, ah. selected for us a 1988 Porsche 911 commemorative edition that is currently on bring a trailer our car is located in agora hills california showing a whopping three hundred and fifty four thousand miles but jp i gotta tell you i know i'm getting old and i know i wear contacts but those studio shots make it look like it's brand new like it does not look like a three hundred and fifty thousand mile car clearly this car has been refreshed it's got rs door cards and somebody replaced uh the standard seats with some recaro racing buckets jp do you recognize the model of recaro seat that's in that car uh, i haven't gotten that, to interior yet so i i forget if that's called the sidewinder or something else i know you'll know you know your seats like you know your watches uh, our car has ac but it's been basically refreshed and treated to some really nice updates it's got metal pedals and i don't know a few other little things i think they rebuilt the motor too at some point with slightly higher compression like european specification compression uh so that's 10.3 to 1 on a 3.2 so it's this car's probably making somewhere between 230 250 horsepower uh but it looks really nice it looks uh particularly clean when you look at the old seats and the old carpet you really start to see the age on the car but when you look at the car and the images i mean my god it looks really good um anyways super nice car um, not fast by Sahan standard, but certainly not as slow as the, the 911s you and I drive, JP. I think this car being lighter weight and higher compression would probably give your 964 a run for its money, uh, and it would certainly sew the taillights to my uh, wide body. Um, I do like the color, although I can see where it might not be for everybody. It is a feminine color, uh, that diamond blue metallic paint, but I, I dig it. I don't care, and I like what he did. Um, very tasteful but not overdone on the cosmetic stuff on the inside it looks like a very inviting place to you know spend your weekends having fun with your friends i i like what what i see here um the question is you know if this was a hundred thousand mile commemorative edition um and it was all stock you're talking about a buck and a quarter or more for this car uh, but the miles are going to hurt it my question to you jp do the modifications enhance the value and and sort of you know counteract uh the, the depreciation this car would receive from the high mileage um or do the mods not help it at all because it's not stock he shows the stock stuff and clearly this car's got some miles on it mm -hmm. um but i think it looks good here it looks like refreshed like when i look at it it looks like a car that i would want to have fun in. it doesn't look like a car that's all beat to hell i i think he did a good job with it but i'm curious to know what's your take high miles but a nice modified refreshment refurbishment and i think they did i think that's money well spent where are you at with that jp agree or disagree yeah well first off those are uh recaro pole position seats and pole positions are, i knew you would know yeah those are definitely i mean look you ask do the the mods that we're talking about here are pretty simple mods i mean the only th there's only one real mod here and that's the seat motor yeah well, well the motor I mean, the, the, but the motor isn't really I mean, that's, I mean, you said that they changed the, the cylinder compression ratio. The yeah. compression ratio. Okay. So, so they rebuilt it. Yeah. So yes. how long ago was that work done is the big question. Uh, you talk and I'll figure that out. Yeah. Okay. So in the meantime, like, you know, yes, those seats are definitely going to add some value. I mean, those seats by themselves are, you know, call it worth, you know, 3,500 bucks, 4,000 bucks or whatever. And, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can definitely get a used set of Carrera seats for a grand 1500 bucks. So, um, but you know, whatever that's, that's very small. Uh, but it really does enhance the driving experience of a car like this. And, you know, cause it's going to give you a lot more butt horsepower. That's one thing about the classic nine <laughs> yeah. elevens with the, with the seats that they come with, they're kind of squishy and stuff like that. And they're, they're a little bit numbing, you know, for a car that's everyone loves to use that visceral word, right? You know, well, these seats are a one piece 
these seat and that your butt's going to tell you that you're actually doing something and that's fun. But you know, the floorboards I could do without the pedals, whatever. Um, you know, it's just a, this is a no nonsense driver. Uh, and I'm yeah. curious to know about that, that the engine rebuild, if the engine's been rebuilt, if the transmission is still solid. I mean, that's a, that's another thing too. I mean, at 350,000 miles, that transmission, even though it's a G50, that is the transmission that everyone wants. It's about a hundred pounds more than the previous 915, but it is so much buttery, smooth, uh, so much more uh, easy to shift than the 915. And uh, people really do love the 87 to 89 911s because of this transmission. You don't really get any more, much more power uh, out of this per- particular version of the Carrera in this era, but that transmission makes it feel like you get more power. Um, so yeah, if this engine is fresh, even if the engine is just fresh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Can um, I, can I jump in for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Let, it, tell us about that. I just want to tell you. So it was, <laughs> it was built to European spec, uh, in August of 2023 JP. Mm. So this is not even six, seven, eight months old, wow. uh, by a place called German motors of Santa Monica, ah. Santa Monica, California, not okay. the German motors we all know and love in Vegas. Uh, what's up, Daniel? Shout out. But um, yeah, down there in Santa Monica just last year, JP. So it's a that's a very fresh motor. Yeah. Now that, yeah. So that's great news. That means this car, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where cosmetically it's good enough. It's not perfect, but this is the kind of thing you take in the, in the canyons and rip up. Who cares? Who cares what you do to this car? You drive the living is out of it. And uh, with those seats, you're just going to have a great time. AJ, I know you are a modern car guy. I know that you have a GT3 RS. It's like the fourth <laughs> time we've mentioned that in this episode. Uh, would you drive an air-cooled 911? And what do you think of this car? We, won't, we don't need your number yet, but what do you think of this car? I would drive an air cooled Porsche for sure. Um, I, I I like the look of it. Um, I I would do my own touch ups if I do end up getting one of these. I think yeah. you know who I am very pretty well. I got to put my own uh, taste to it, but I think there there's it's such a classic vehicle. I I love the way it looks. Well, yeah, like on your supercars, you add exhaust and superchargers mm-hmm. and turbos and all kinds of stuff mm-hmm. like that. It Would you, if you were going to buy an air-cooled car, would you start with like a narrow body one like this and put superchargers and tur- or turbos on it or something like that? I, or would you start with like a 930 and just put bigger turbos on that? Because this car obviously I, isn't a turbo. I would probably, I'm actually in the market for RWB right now. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm just kind of like looking around. I even looked it up um, on Bring a Trailer as well, but there's I don't think there's any up there. Well, I mean, that's the thing about RWB, though, is RWBs have don't do anything to the engines. No. That's up to it's the individual. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's all just plastic bullshit that, <laughs> sorry, I just swore on my own show, uh, <laughs> that just makes the car heavier and, you know, more drag. Yeah. You, if it's, you got, it's got to, it looks the part, you, you got to put a motor in them, in my uh, opinion. That yeah. drives me nuts. So, I, but I'm sure you'll get one that'll have a motor in it too. Hopefully, um, yeah. Yeah. Supercharge it. Supercharge it. All right, Deeb. So what do we think this car is going to bring? Ooh. All right, JP. So fresh motor, but the chassis has 354,000 miles on it. Again, our car closes tomorrow on Bring a Trailer out of Agora Hills, California. 88 911 Carrera Coupe Commemorative Edition. Basically one of 875 total uh, for the world built to uh, celebrate Porsche's production of the 250,000th 911. Uh, one of 300 in the U.S., and um, 120 of them were diamond blue metallic. So it's a, it's you know by the numbers it's a rare car, uh, but like you said, JP, I, I almost think that none of that stuff matters. It is just an old driving G50 coupe, uh, and as such, the the current the current bid is just thirty eight thousand nine hundred eleven dollars. It's not even at forty grand on eleven bids. John, I I think that number will basically double. Um, I'm gonna give you. <laughs> I'm going to give you $77,911. Where are you at, John? Higher that, or lower? That is a really good bid. It is tough to bid against because that's kind of where... So you're at 70, what, 77? 77, 911. So I'm and really at how 78. Much, how much time is left on this? We got another it day closes or two? To, it closes tomorrow and it's at 38, 911. 
Yeah. Um, so, psh, gosh, do I go above you or to below you? I, I'm going to go a little higher because you said it earlier. You said that if this were a lower reasonable mile, like even if this was like a yeah. hundred, if this were a 120,000 mile car with a, be, with a fresh rebuild, it would definitely a hundred be a $120,000 car, yeah. right? Or more yeah. because it's the commemorative edition. Um, I think we're Zing out all the commemorative edition stuff. Um, but, uh, with that engine rebuild, did it say when you were looking, if it had anything done? to the transmission in, in any no, of that work. Nothing, yeah. nothing's mentioned in the in the gearbox. Yeah, that's uh so I'm gonna park it just above you or below you? That's the big question. I'm gonna go 79 911. I'm gonna park it right above you because you uh, I, I I don't know if this is gonna quite get to 80, but you know, a lower mileage one would easily be 80. But um I, I like the seats, I like the engine refresh. Um, a lot of the nerd herd is coming in uh, at bids from 55, 53. Randy's at uh, 67. Um, yeah, yeah, they're all Chris Carr rides on at this. 64. Ooh, really? 55, uh, 53? That's low numbers, man. G50 cars always bring the money. AJ, care to make a wager? You are bet with AJ. What That's would you right. bet on this 911? He'd bet his GT3 RS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I'll probably uh, put a bid on it for, s well, I I probably wouldn't get this one, but um, just to throw out a number, 75,911, I don't know. <laughs> you think, it'll, okay, that's so you, that's yeah, a good, good guess. That's a yeah. good guess because yeah. I was either going to go just over Deeb or just under yeah. him, yeah. Uh, and that's basically you took the under. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I, I think that's fair. I, I really don't know. And it, this is going to be a good kind of canary in the coal mine because, uh, you know, everyone's asking what's going on in the market, what's going on in bring a trailer, what's going on with air cooled cars. Are they softening? Are they crashing? And you know, we, a lot of times we'll put in our thumbnails, Oh, the market crash or market correction, or blah, blah, blah. you know, that's to get people's attention. I think there's definitely a correction going on and it's exasperated. I can't pronounce the exasperated, um, exacerbated, uh, by inflation. When you start looking at numbers that are flat from maybe a year ago or or a little less, it's actually a lot more when you start factoring, you know, 10, 15% inflation on that. So, you know, if this car were worth, uh, call it uh, $90,000 a year ago, uh, and it brings $90,000 now, that's a you know, at least a 10% loss um, in real dollars when you factor in inflation. So it'll be interesting to see what this car brings. If it only brings in the 50s, I think that says that only blue chip stuff and only really high end stuff is safe. Everything else is taking an ish. Um, what do you think, Deep? Yeah, I, it, it, this one, I, I, I just don't know that I like this one as the litmus test because. It's so niche. We have it. We cover these cars all the time, JP, but we don't see them with 300,000 miles. And a fresh motor accounts for something. But you, if they didn't spend any money on the suspension, the, the next owner could be up for $10,000 in suspension work in the next two years that he owns it. So I don't like this car as our canary in the coal mine. I'd rather see something that's a little more of a staple, like a like a fair mile S, uh, yeah, SC no, no, or no, no, a fair mile. That, that's, no. that's my point exactly, is a, a good, solid, normal car is a we we kind of know what's going on with those we've seen those yeah. are consistent those are okay this is yeah. a weird car with oh this is an anomaly car this has right. high miles it has all this weird stuff but it still has a bunch of the things that people like it's a g50 and it's an 88 uh and it's got an engine and fresh rebuild. motor yeah. yeah so it's like okay the weird stuff is always the first thing the the weird stuff is the fringe. It's the margin, right? Because yeah. you always look at the margin to see what's going to happen on, on the mean. So, okay, this is out here on the fringes. If this thing falls off hard, if it only brings $53,000, that is a hard, hard, hard drop in value. Yeah. Because this yeah. thing definitely would have brought $80,000 a year ago. But if it only brings $80,000 now, then it's like, okay, well, all pretty much all air-cooled 911s, as long as they've got, a, you know, that are good running and driving coupes with a G50, all right, I think things are okay. So it, it, that's why I think it's not this... I'm not looking for the car that is correct, the car that is right. I'm looking for the car that's kind of wrong uh, to first test to, to test the market. What do you guys think? Uh, do you think this is a good kind of test of the market to kind of see what's going on on the fringes? Um, or do you think I'm full of ish like everyone else does? Let us know in the comments below. Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends, God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic 
G50 cab. Is that going to be for sale? It is going to be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. On Save it. yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for, gotten Porsche of Las Vegas. Hey guys, you're probably looking at your watch and wondering if bid nerds will ever end. So you better talk to our friends at Our Smiths to make sure your Rolex, Tag Hauer, AP, or any fine timepiece is in tip top shape. Our Smiths, fine Swiss repair. Several days later. So, John. The first car last week was a 1988 Porsche 911 Carrera Coupe commemorative edition. So in 89, they had the anniversary, but in 88, there was a special edition referred to as the commemorative edition. 875 total examples were built to celebrate the production of the 250,000th 911. Of the 300 units that were brought to the United States, 120 of them were all finished in diamond blue. Our car is out of Agora Hills, California, showing 354,000 miles on the odometer, and it sits on Bring a Trailer. But the big news here, JP, is that just a year ago, the motor was rebuilt, and it was rebuilt with... Um, higher compression pistons and stuff like that. And then they did a mild sort of sporty makeover with the fixed back seats and the RS door cart. Um, cosmetically, the car looks to be in decent condition. I will commend the owner of the car, the consigner of the car, for showing a picture <clears throat> of the leather seats that they pulled out of the car because the leather seats look like they have 354,000 miles on them. But the car looks to be in decent shape. And with a fresh motor, we wondered how well this special edition unique colorway high compression motor g50 gearbox like if you take the if you take the odometer out of the conversation everything else about this car ticks every box you'd want for a g-body carrera am i right or am i right so um we wondered out loud what this car could do and with that in mind i started the bidding at seventy seven thousand nine hundred eleven dollars knowing that if this car had somewhere between 100 and 150 thousand miles this would easily be a six-figure car um, but we took the mileage into uh, uh, consideration, and so that's where I started. Seventy-seven nine eleven, JP, you took the over by just a couple of grand at seventy-nine thousand nine eleven, and then we had uh, AJ in studio. Um, AJ's from Vegas, and you invited him into the studio. He was our third nerd last week while Wade was out. AJ took the under at seventy-five thousand nine eleven. So I see it looks like the uh, the bids are up. Randy was at sixty-seven. Anthony was at 69, very under. Gerd, who's typically one of the more accurate herd, was really uh, bearish on this one at 55. Kevin at 73, that's a good bid. Scott D at 67, Ross at 68, and SGT Tom. Uh, wow, 53, that is the low bid. Um, <laughs> JP, before we even get to the result, man, nobody liked this car, huh? Like, what's yeah. the deal? I, the yeah, motor, was scared of the that's miles, a 40, but it's like, who cares, right? But that's a $40,000 motor, am I wrong? Uh, yeah, I mean, probably close to that. I mean, these days, that's about what they're charging for a complete rebuild with upgrades. Yeah, but, somewhere but if you're between going, 25 to 40 grand, sure. Correct me, because there's like three levels of a motor upgrade, right? Top end, and then pistons and cylinders, and then a full bottom end where you split the case. Is this, if yeah, you're I doing mean, pistons... a full rebuild with pistons and cylinders, but they didn't change the displacement the, size, did they? They just basically... No, they no, went, yeah, went yeah. high compression. But still, so I probably, mean, yeah, you're definitely yeah. looking at between thirty and forty thousand dollars for that kind yeah. of rebuild, for sure. Totally fresh 20, engine. Yeah, twenty five thirty horsepower is going to wake this motor up, and yeah, it's probably sure. going to rev five, six, seven hundred uh, RPM higher. It's going to be a fun. That's a fun motor. I don't care. So, anyways, long story longer. Our car hammered at seventy six thousand dollars, where it sold on a very respectable 35 bids. JP, I had to do the math because that bid landed in between AJ and myself. AJ was closer, so he gets the nod. Um, but You know he has a GT3 I, RS, right? I, I heard that, yeah. He mentioned it. Um, and a Lamborghini and a Koenigsegg. And a, yeah, a few cars. <laughs> but um, we tease, AJ. So I would just say, John, the three of us that were on the show were really close to what this car brought. But the herd was really um, dogged. They, they kind of dogged the car. Everybody was in the 60s, and there were a couple in the 50s. Uh, I'm more interested in why the herd was so – did we do a bad job presenting the car? Like, does the odometer scare – and I don't, I'm not calling the herd average, but does the, does the odometer scare the average guy away? Because 
you know, if you change the axles and you update the brakes and you build a new motor, that car's brand new again, right? Like, what am I missing? Well, I mean, there was some... One thing I don't think we really mentioned when we were talking about the car is that there was some corrosion here and there um you know but it to me it just didn't none of it was really there was no cancer there there was a little no. bit about around one of the you know windshields or something like that so you know it, it could be argued that if you wanted this car to be concord level you'd have to like strip it down to paint and fix those yeah. things but but to me it's like who cares man the only thing i would no. do to this car if i owned it and this is absolutely a car that i would love to own uh mm. would be to lower it uh, you know, make yeah. sure that the suspension is good, and because uh, it's you know kind of it's North America four by four status Crank it height. Down. Uh, but yeah. you know, it's very easy safari. to lower one of these, and uh, or yeah, or just put safari tires on it. It's already high enough, and you're good to go. I mean, this car mm -hmm. is a fresh old 911. I know that's kind of uh, sounds like an oxymoron or whatever, but uh, I, I just don't think the rust was anywhere near uh, as bad as everyone's saying. It had a couple of little spots. Big deal. Um, but 76 grand, um, yeah, I mean, because if you back out the engine, uh, if you back out the 40,000 bucks for an engine rebuild, uh, what is that? 30 something thousand dollars. I mean, if the engine were yeah. blown or something. So, right. I mean, this car is definitely, even if this car had a blown engine, this thing's worth 50 grand. It's a G 50 car. Uh, and G 50 cars bring the money. If this were just a regular Carrera or an SC, then yeah, uh, with a rebuilt motor, maybe you'd be lucky to get something, you know, in the high fifties or whatever, but that's, this is a G 50 car guys. Plus the command and mm. river edition, which uh, doesn't really mean anything to me, but still adds a little something to the value. Uh, I'm not shocked by these results. I think that's pretty much right on. And, well, uh, you know, I had mentioned on the last episode too, this car is going to be a canary in the coal mine. Coal mine, right. Right. <laughs> you know, um, and your your pushback was, no, we should have, you know, a canary in a coal uh, mine would be a more regular version right. of the car without any not but my whole point is that i want to look at the fringes i want to look yeah. at the that the margin you know this car is a margin car this isn't a blue chip yeah. car this car is no. out there on the edge it's got a bunch of things that, like you said that everyone should like but way higher miles and some corrosion uh but also you know so these are all things that in a in a market that was having real problems this car no one would even touch, right? This would be an FTS car, but it's still got $76,000. That means a good 88 911, if with normal miles, is still darn near a $100,000 car probably. Yeah, yeah. Does that, does that add up? I think, I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think it does. Anthony, uh, Anthony's screaming at us in the comments, and, and of course, Anthony could do that because he's the sponsor of the show, but he's saying, Rust, you're missing the Rust. So based on that, assertion do you think jp that the person who did pay 76 may have overreached just a little bit do you think that no, that like he car missed the rust have rust this car had yeah. a couple of rust spots it's not okay. a rusty car look underneath this car this is not a rusty car look at this guys <laughs> Where is it's the rust? Cleaner than, it's cleaner than my M491. <laughs> right. This thing my, is, my M491 has more orange underneath it than that does. There is no rust in this car, guys. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it had a couple of typical spots. You know, one under the door where sometimes the water collects, and one in that corner under uh, the windshield uh, in that lower right hand corner, which is just mm -hmm. something that that's uh, those are a couple of spots. Big deal. It's a galvanized body. This thing's fine. Everybody relax. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's not uh, a Fiat. Yeah, right. It's not going to break in half like a like a nine fourteen or something like that. Dropped you from know? a helicopter. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, love this car, uh, but you know, and if it didn't have those rust spots, would this have been a ninety thousand dollar car? Geez, I mean, uh, I I do agree with you, Anthony, that those couple of rust spots are issues. Don't get me wrong. It's not that they are that you just you know wave it away, but I don't think they're nearly as big a deal as um you know as uh, somebody's making out to be but anyways all right um what do you guys think of the results of this 88 commemorative edition 911 with high miles but a brand new fresh engine uh and a bunch of cool mods uh was this car well bought or did the seller s steal some money out of someone's wallet did it did some <laughs> did a buyer get mugged where are the buyers they're buying old 911s apparently and uh we support that uh so if uh if you've got yeah. some money 
money and you're looking for a safe place to put it, seems like an air cooled 911 uh, is never going to do you wrong. Let's a move. rusty, a rusty air cooled 911. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching this clip of the Bid Nerds podcast. Play along with us live every Sunday and Wednesday night at 6 30 p.m. on YouTube and see if your bids stack up to the rest of the nerd herd in the chat live. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you on the next episode. Nerd! Get those nerds!